I need to share a traumatic brain injury survivor experience that's going to be very vulnerable. One that, that discusses TBI rage, shadows, trauma versions, and the hurt that I recently caused to my own father, verbally and emotionally. Now, I'm grateful, I just want to preface before I get into this, that my father and I have the ability to have adult mature conversations. It did take me an hour to calm down after my rage. I tried to take a cold shower. I'm in Phoenix, the water wasn't cold enough. I walked out into my backyard and I focused on breath work to try to reset my central nervous system. That didn't work. I tried to love on my dog. That didn't work. I tried to disengage. I was like a pit bull. I couldn't, you know? And I tried a lot of positive coping skills, both mental health and brain injury wise to be able to work through that. And what I have learned is generally when I'm in a rage, the best way for me to reframe is to smoke marijuana or partake in marijuana. Um, it absolutely reframes my mind. It absolutely allows me to have clarity and it breaks me out of the rage. So that really helped. But we were able to sit down and discuss that he feels that, you know, hey, I'm really grateful that he saw this version of me that I call the Shadow King. I've done a lot of trauma therapy where I've worked on my trauma versions. The Shadow King shows up in my TBI rage when I am so depleted in my brain battery and I'm, I've become into an exacerbation of my brain injury that I can no longer process information and any information that's coming at me, especially if it's conflict or confrontation, I can't handle it. It feels like it's going to kill me. Like, so he shows up and he rages and he says the meanest things and I really need you to imagine rage, like rage, like the veins popping out of my face, my neck, my eyes having a demonic stare to it. I allowed him to show himself just for a second um, in a mild version. I, I really need you to understand the pain and the trauma I'm causing for other people and myself. I've lost my impulse control. I don't, I'm not, I'm not very present. But what's happening is he's trying to shut down the stimuli. Now, my father came to me and said, I'm grateful I got to see him. I'm grateful that I got to experience that because my father approaches situations like this as I do. I, I mean, clearly this is kind of where I learned it from. Um, to see obstacles and conflict and confrontation as opportunity for growth. If we pay attention and we observe, my father was able to observe me and see me in ways that he wasn't able to see. And I'm grateful that I was able to express to him in ways that he hadn't been able to hear. It was, I have a lot of guilt and shame around that and I'm doing some good work on it. Um, some acceptance, some compassion. Um, it's not okay for me to behave in those ways. It's not. Uh, I do everything I can to avoid it. What did I do? I think I already mentioned my positive coping skills. The shower, the with my dog, the breath work, the, the marijuana, right? We do our best. And my dad said, you know, sometimes he forgets because I've been doing so well. What I would... A well, big learning lesson for him was when I'm in that stage, don't try to calm me down. The stimulation in itself is what's upsetting me. It's not even really your words anymore. It's just the interaction. I need rest. I need sensory deprivation. I literally, the moment my dad ended up leaving the next day and I had the rest of the time to myself, I was able to rest and recover and have clarity again, like, because I wasn't being attacked by sensory, right? So, um, he stayed the next day because I had to get some nerve blocks in my neck and he just wanted to make sure I was okay. It's important to share this. 
I understand this is a longer video, but it's important to share this. The TBI rage is so real. And I ask you as survivors to be honest with yourselves about it, to work with the compassion, to do work and, and practice to try to manage it, to become more present, to communicate that, that you're building to that point, that, um, and to recognize and try to be present and aware that you're building to that point so that you can either try to disengage or remove yourself or communicate a boundary. Whatever it is that you need to do for yourself, um, as the caregivers, I ask that you please recognize the signs that we're building into agitation, that we're having trouble with noises and sounds and dialect and, and interactions and um, our dialogue and that we need rest. And, and, and please, I understand that you might want to talk about something that's important and dear, um, but maybe it's just not the time because it's going to get worse and then you're going to have something else to talk about. I love you, my friends. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for seeing me. And thank you for taking the time to try to understand me as I try to share these experiences to help you learn to understand yourself or your training or your traumatic brain injury survivor. Thank you.